Now, it's no secret that the Central Intelligence Agency is in the business of covert operations and covering their tracks. You could call it their standard operating procedure. But the CIA has allegedly had its say in world politics numerous times. If you aren't able or willing to see eye to eye with the US, the CIA may have forced you to do so in some very interesting and sometimes unusual ways. Most of them failed, at least the times we know of. Let's have a look at the four times the CIA took things a little too far to try and eliminate their enemies. Welcome to the Spy Network. Number 1. Fidel Castro We could make a whole separate video on how the US tried to eliminate Castro, but we'll just highlight a couple of the most interesting ones. One of Fidel's mistresses was allegedly contacted by the CIA and took on the job. She was ordered to smuggle in capsules filled with poisons and did so in face cream. When trying to extract the pills out of the jar with cream, she noticed the pills were dissolved. She immediately tried to get rid of the evidence by flushing it down the toilet, but was caught in the act. Fidel reportedly handed her his gun and told her to make an end to it herself. It was no secret that Fidel Castro liked cigars, and this was reason enough for the CIA to try to get him that way. The CIA allegedly attempted at least two times to assassinate Fidel Castro with his famous cigar. The Saturday Evening Post stated that during Castro's visit to the United Nations in September 1960, New York City police officer Michael J. Murphy was paid to offer him a cigar packed with explosives. Accounts dispute on whether the scheme was genuine or a diversion to deflect attention from more serious assassination attempts. A year later, the agency sent an operative to slip Castro a cigar loaded with botulinum toxin, which would instantly kill him. The agent supposedly got the cigars in February 1961, but there's no evidence that he or she ever attempted to get them to him. The next attempt was utilizing the Cuban leader's love for dairy products. In the early 1960s, the CIA attempted to poison a chocolate milkshake he would drink every day around the same time at the Habana Libre Hotel. The attempt failed as the poison somehow got stuck on the wall of the freezer. This attempt was part of increasing the success of the 1961 Bay of Pigs operation, which ultimately failed. They even tried to utilize his love for diving by planning on making exploding seashells that would attract his attention by having bright and unusual colors or infecting his diving suite with a specific fungus that would cause a debilitating disease. Fidel has survived more than 600 reported assassination attempts. As you can imagine, we could go on and on. They went above and beyond to rob him from his life. Number 2. Indonesian President Sukarno this is a rather bizarre story. In attempts to overthrow and discredit President Sukarno, the US and the Soviet Union were battling for who could get the best and quickest blackmail. The Indonesian president was an avid enthusiast of sexual intercourse and didn't hide it. He had multiple wives and made no secret of needing physical contact daily. The Russian KGB tried to get compromise on him by sending in some beautiful young women posing as air hostesses to his hotel. Whenever he would try and make advances on the women, the KGB would be ready to film the occasion. But they made a crucial mistake. He was known for flaunting his sexual tendencies, and therefore it was impossible to use that against him. When the KGB showed it to him, he burst out laughing and asked for extra copies of the tape. When the CIA got notice of the failed attempts, and their attempts on arming the rebels that wanted to get rid of the sitting president failed too, they took it a step further. They wanted to produce an adult film and started actively scouting for lookalikes that could go down as Sukarno himself. In case a lookalike wasn't going to cut it, they were planning on making a full-blown face mask resembling the Indonesian president. Surprisingly, the film went as far as production, and although photos of it have leaked, the film itself has never been seen. Sukarno was later overthrown in a bloody coup. Number 3. Patrice Lumumba the next target is Patrice Lumumba, the first democratically elected Prime Minister of the Republic of Congo. The CIA in Belgium saw him as a communist and as a threat to their interests in Africa. The KGB's interest in the Prime Minister may also have had something to do with it. 
Mid-September 1960, Larry Devlin, CIA Chief of Station in Congo, receives a message from Langley. A certain Joe from Paris will land on Leopoldville in the end of September, and he would need to work together. Joe was a chemist working for the CIA. He brought a selection of poisons with him, which needed to be brought in the hands of the unbeknownst Prime Minister. When asked who ordered this operation, it was none other than President Eisenhower. He had no choice but to go through with it. Within that package, there was a poison toothpaste that would give the user a severe form of polio. Devlin would continue his efforts to get it close to Lumumba over the next several weeks, but failed to do so. It was not much later that Lumumba was arrested when trying to escape his stronghold. He was severely beaten and flown back to Leopoldville where the last thing he saw was a firing squad. Number 4. Operation Northwoods The last one is also the most pathetic one. In order to get to Fidel Castro, they needed something more besides trying to poison him. Not having a reason to storm the country and overthrow anyone in their way, why not create one? The CIA allegedly planned false flag operations against American and Cuban citizens to have a reason to invade Cuba. The proposals called for CIA operatives to plan and carry out acts of lethal terrorism against American military and civilian targets, blaming them on the Cuban government and using them to justify a war on Cuba. The memo listed probable scenarios such as remote-controlled civilian aircraft secretly repainted as U.S. Air Force planes, killing of Cuban immigrants, drowning boats carrying Cuban refugees on the high seas, blowing up a U.S. ship, and coordinating terrorism in U.S. towns. The attacks against Americans were not planned to be violent, but the attacks on Cuban refugee boats were going to be actual or fake, with the goal of injuring as many people as possible in order to get media attention. The suggestions would ultimately be turned down by a president that is on the headline in a lot of CIA conspiracies and allegations. That president was John F. Kennedy. If you like what we're doing here, consider subscribing and hit the bell icon to never miss a new video. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.